How is Zidane outclassed City in? Real Madrid 2, Barcelona 0, a tactical analysis. Before this video starts, make sure you subscribe to the channel and click the bell so you don't miss out on any of my videos coming up over the next few weeks. Also check out my most recent video, which is a tactical analysis of Manchester United's 1-1 draw of Everton, as well as our Champions League tactical reviews, including Bayern Munich's 3-0 demolition of Chelsea, Manchester City's 2-1 win over Real Madrid at the Bernabeu, and Atletico Madrid's defensive masterclass versus Liverpool. All of those videos will be linked in the description below. So going into the game, Zidane set up his side in a 4-1-4-1 system with Courtois in goal, Varane and Ramos at centre-back, Carver Hull and Marcelo the full-backs, Casemiro and Cruz in midfield with Isco ahead of them, Valverde on the right, Vinicius Jr on the left and Benzema up front. Kike Setien used a 4-4-2 shape with Testergut in goal, PK and Umtiti the centre-backs, Alba and Semedo at full-back with a midfield of Busquets and Arthur with Vidal on the right of midfield, De Jong on the left and Messi starting up centrally alongside Griezmann. Real Madrid started the game pressing high and aggressively in a man-to-man -man oriented pressing system. The three central midfielders pushed up high, up the pitch, onto Busquets, Arthur and De Jong and almost man-marked them when the ball was in Barcelona's defensive third, following them if they went into deep areas. Madrid would use Benzema and Isco to press the two centre-backs, whilst also closing down the passing lanes into the full-backs. This meant that the only pass Barcelona had open was a lofted pass to each full-back, which if played would allow Madrid to squeeze the player against the touchline and with the ball in the air it would be harder for either Alba or Semedo to gather the ball under control and then find a teammate. Barcelona used a 4-3-3 in possession, with the midfield three rotating positions in order to try to wriggle free off the tight marking of the Madrid midfielders in order to find space. Vidal and Messi would occupy the space between the midfield and defence of Real Madrid, playing very narrow with Griezmann ahead of them. With the Madrid central midfield pushing so far up the pitch, it was imperative that Ramos followed Messi when he dropped into these areas in behind Casemiro, as if he didn't a simple pass would have allowed Barcelona to bypass the Madrid press and get Messi on the ball in the centre of the pitch, running at the Madrid back line. When Barcelona had established possession in the middle third, Real would drop off into a compact 4-4-1-1 shape, with Valverde playing a unique role on the right side of midfield for Zidane. He would track back with Jordi Alba when he bombed down the left for Barcelona, but also drop into a more central position to cover De Jong when he moved into the half space. City inside did lack advanced width, with Griezmann, Messi, Vidal and De Jong all playing in central zones. Barcelona didn't play with a designated striker as all four would move into the centre at some point in the attacking moves. But it was still clear what Barcelona's offensive game plan was. Setien recognised that Ramos would likely be drawn out the back line by Messi and this would leave space for De Jong and Arthur to make third man runs from deep positions which occurred when Barcelona shifted the ball to the left side. Varane was drawn over but Ramos didn't fill the gap allowing Arthur to make a direct run through the middle of the two centre backs and receive a one on one opportunity which he couldn't take. Out of possession Barcelona dropped into a 4-4-2 shape leaving Messi and Griezmann high up the pitch. Barca pressurised Real from their build-up, pushing Busquets and Arthur high up onto Cruz and Casemiro. However, when Real were able to beat the Barca press, Barca would drop into two banks of four. Real's offensive plan was to feed the ball into the attacking players between the lines and try to get runners in behind Barca's fullbacks. Zidane did make a slight tactical tweak from previous games by instructing Valverde to stay wider on the right flank instead of moving in as much. In games gone by, Real often had five players in central areas and lacked advanced width, which made it easy for the opposition to close off the spaces between the lines. Valverde did make some excellent runs in behind Jordi Alba playing 1-2s on the right flank, but Real were unable to make much of these opportunities, though this did show the Uruguayans capabilities. In the second half, Real continued to press Barcelona aggressively, trying to force them down the middle of the pitch with Isco and Benzema shutting off the passing lanes to the fullbacks, as this would give Real the greatest chance of winning the ball back in a dangerous position. Real Madrid's midfield were incredibly combative, with the whole unit well disciplined when it came to swarming around a player to win the ball back high up the pitch. There were periods of the game throughout the second half when Barca struggled to play out of their own half, and this allowed Real to cement authority on the game. Barcelona's midfielders continued to look to play between the lines, and Madrid used a man-to-man -man marking system to cope with this, which saw Casemiro sometimes dropping into the back line when players dropped in between the lines. This was probably due to the couple of times Barca midfielders were able to make third-man runs in behind the back line in the first half. 
Real Madrid's opening goal came from the left flank from a combination of Benzema's fantastic movement deep which pulled Tomato out of the back line and Cruz's perfectly weighted pass for Vinicius's well-timed run off the back of Martin Braithwaite in the right-sided channel from where he was able to finish pass to Sturgeon. Throughout this game the problem was that Barcelona didn't engage the Real midfield high enough and allowed them to wander into their half. Real, on the other hand, were intense with their pressing and wanted to use their press as an offensive weapon by setting pressing traps and winning the ball in the Barcelona defensive third. Mariano's late goal secured the win for Real Madrid, but this game showcased how well organised Zidane's pressing system is and that he's adapted his tactics from the deep-sitting 4-5-1 system that he used during his first tenure. Setien once again looked underwhelming, there wasn't enough urgency when closing Madrid down in the middle third and they need more advanced width in their system in order to stretch the opposition system and give Messi and co more space between the lines to do damage. Thank you for watching, remember to like and share the video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this.